So that was the intro. As you guys can see, it's extremely high quality professional standard for a channel of my popularity. You know, um, currently less than 10,000 subscribers to have an intro that looks, you know, as good as that is nice. What is up everyone? Today's date is February 20th, 2019. And that only means one thing. 10 years ago to the day, this exact day 10 years ago, I opened the It's My Natural Colour YouTube channel and we've been doing this ever since. Wow, 10 years of IMNC. I just can't get over it. A whole decade. Today, we're going to look back year by year. We're going to go in order. I've made some notes. I've made some notes about some videos, some key moments. We're going to talk about the channel and I guess my life, where we were at that time, the good, the bad. We're just going to have a little chat about the history of IMNC in medium detail because I don't want this video to be crazy long. I want it to be entertaining for people that weren't around at the beginning. I don't want to bore people with a load of um, sentimentality or whatever, a load of nostalgia. But we're going to chat about IMNC. Um, but before we do, I just want to take this opportunity, as I always do in kind of milestone videos. This is a milestone video um, because we've made it, you know, 10 years and we're still here. And I want to take this opportunity to quickly say a massive, massive thank you to every single one of you guys, new viewers, old viewers, people that have dropped in and out over the years. I just, I can't thank you enough because it's you guys that, that make this. I know I've said it a million times now, um, but it is you guys. It's not me. You know, I, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you so much for being into this stuff, for, for staying interested and just enjoying what I do and, and sticking with me, persevering, because I know I can be a right awkward so-and-so sometimes when it comes to unfulfilled promises and stuff. And I really realised that when I was looking back on the channel. Um, but anyway, let's kick things off with the first year 2009. Up until this point, I'd already had a YouTube channel. It was called Thomas773 Smith. Wonderful username. Uh, I do remember where it comes from, actually. It was um, an auto generated, the 773 was an auto generated number by Bebo, from Bebo. When I signed up to my second Bebo account, it just gave me Thomas773. Um, I don't know why it did that. I guess that's how it worked. I'm not too sure because I seem to remember being able to choose my username the first time round. But anyway, you know, we're talking 11 years ago or whatever, 12 years ago, when I signed up to my second Bebo account, Thomas773 was the, the name I was given. And that's what I kind of used across the internet for a little while. And I guess it was taken on YouTube because I just plonked another Smith on the end of it, which was completely redundant uh, because obviously I already had the Tom S. So I was suddenly Tom Smith 773 Smith. <laughs> so completely ridiculous username. And it, there's no point going to search for that channel. It would have brought you some results a couple of years ago, but I think maybe three, four years ago at a push. Um, the channel was taken down. Somebody got into it, you know, whoever you were, well done. <laughs> Some Someone managed to squeeze into it. I hadn't logged into it for years and years. Um, uploaded a load of, um, you know, stuff that broke the rules, I guess, broke the YouTube rules, and the channel got taken down. I got an email about it and stuff. So, yeah, that was that. Um, I'd long since purged the videos. So what was on that old channel, before we talk about IMNC, quickly... Um, there was all sorts of things. There was some music stuff that I did when I was very, very young. Uh, some skating videos because I was heavy into skateboarding at the time. And then later on, throughout 2008, into the second half of 2008, and especially into the October, November, December time, I was semi-regularly uploading tech videos. Um, my interest had started to ramp up in all things tech. I got into Apple massively. I got into um, uh, retro gaming more, and I wanted to learn about the, the history of Nintendo and Sega. And, and I, I just remember that time 
uh, I was hungry for tech knowledge. So I was learning, 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 but also pumping back in. And I still remember the number of subscribers I had when I opened It's My Natural Colour. I had 28 subscribers, I believe. That, that number is stuck in my head, so I'm guessing it must be correct. 28 subscribers the day I opened IMNC. And I remember pleading with everyone, please come over to the new channel. Um, and, you know, some people did. Obviously, a lot of those 28 were just sort of random sub for sub and stuff back then. You know, we're talking 2008, 2009. So, you know, it, YouTube was a very different place back then. I opened the new channel. I got some subscribers and I started to try and make consistent and good quality, you know, not video quality, but um, quality in terms of the content of the video, what I thought was good quality videos um, for its natural colour. And the reason I opened the new channel was purely for the username. Back then you could not change your YouTube channel name and I wanted a decent username. And I remember sitting around the table with my parents, we were eating breakfast or lunch or whatever, and I was just saying, guys, what can I call my channel, you know? And they were helping me out and stuff, but I eventually settled on IMNC, it's my natural colour. And the reason being was because the majority of the questions I received were, is that your natural hair colour? So I decided to address it in the channel name. And I would be curious to know how much that has helped that question, because obviously I still get asked that all the time. But yeah, there's a little bit of interesting kind of history there, I guess. Um, I, I was very stressed about choosing a username, very, very stressed, because that was the whole point of launching the new channel. I needed to get the username right. But moving on, as soon as I got IMNC off the ground, I started up re-uploading some of the better videos from the old channel, I think maybe a maximum of three or four, and then bang, I was into new content. And I was pumping them out on a semi-regular basis, definitely enough to, to get some growth. And I saw some fantastic response from people and it inspired me to carry on and put even more effort in and start to, to put some money into this. Um, so 2009 was maybe a growth of, in the matter of tens of subscribers. So I published my 100 subscriber celebration video on July 17th, 2009. So you guys can get an idea of how quickly things went from like 20 odd subscribers up to 100, you know, just a matter of a few months. And it sounds like nothing by today's standards, but to me back then, that was huge. And I started to put more and more effort in. So. A little landmark video that I always look back on from 2009 because I see it as like a turning point for me personally and the real beginnings of my um, Apple tinkering and my knowledge. Um, that was the unboxing of the Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. Holy gosh, man, that is heavy. Oh my gosh, um, in the bottom of the box there is the power cable, not sure if it's the official one but it doesn't really matter, and another pillow. So that's it for the box. And here we have the power mac guys. So I'm going to stop recording now and I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod and show you around the power mac. So that video was uploaded on June 1st of 2009 and from that point onward that was it. Obviously I'd owned um, a few Macs by that point. I had the MacBook. I had a lot of much older machines before then. Um, but when I got that Power Mac G4 Quicksilver, that was such a big deal. I was beyond excited. And then throughout the next little while, it was just a really quick turnaround. So I got the Quicksilver. I made some videos. I got the MDD. I made some videos. Going into 2010, I got the G5. I made some videos. And I had this real quick turnaround of machines. I was just getting the machine, learning about them, tinkering with them, making videos and moving on. Bang! It was like a production line. But the whole time I was doing it, I was broadening my knowledge and, and really building up my foundation of what we have today, my my kind of basis in the, the PowerPC. Um, I'm not going to say PowerPC community because I don't feel like I'm part of the, the hardcore PowerPC gang, but whatever we have going here, that's kind of where it all started for me, at least on the Mac side of things. So before we finish up talking about 2009, one more really quick, cool thing to note, and I couldn't believe this. 
and one of my most popular videos of all time on the channel is currently sitting at 177,000 views. It's not my most popular, but it's up there. It's in the top five. And it was uploaded in 2009, and that is the Nintendo GameCube Game Boy Player. A random video, random, random, whatever had happened, I can't even remember. I'd bought it in a car boot sale or whatever, brought it home to make a video about it, bish, bash, bosh, and there it was. And those kind of videos, they oh God, they're so frustrating because uh, this was 2009, so it was too early for me to make a really polished, lovely video. I had nothing. I was making all of this stuff with my mum's digital camera at the time and the eyesight built into my MacBook if I was doing a talking to the camera video. Uh, and later on, my iPhone actually got my iPhone in around October of 2009. So later on, we started filming with the iPhone. But regardless, I always am <laughs> gutted when videos, just quick videos that I've thrown out for the hell of it, I'm gutted when they skyrocket in popularity because I know how much of a better job I could have done with that video. But hey, the response on that video, all things considered, is pretty good. So that's 2009 in a nutshell. I was a kid, it was me starting off. It's a little bit awkward looking back now if I'm being totally honest with you guys because yeah, I, you know, everyone feels like that about their childhood, I guess. But luckily I, I was, how old was I? I turned 15 in 2009, so I was 14 when I opened the, the channel, I think. I think that's right anyway. So, you know, not too young. I can look back and I, I, I've, you know, I'm, I'm okay with looking back. Um, the old, old, old stuff that I've got rotting away on some old hard drive somewhere from the old channel, yeah, no. I, if that was on IMNC, they would have been long taken down. But that stuff, like the Game Boy Player video, um, all of the videos from back then, you may notice that compared to some other YouTubers, I don't really delete my old content or put my old content on private. I just leave it all there for everyone to see. Um, because it's interesting for people to look back on. YouTube never presents them in search, search results or anything like that. They're too old, they're too rubbish. Um, so they just sit there for anyone who's interested. But yeah, that's 2009. It was fascinating taking a look at the beginning once again. So if 2009 was the beginning, the best way I can describe 2010 is sealing the deal. It sealed IMNC as something proper. 2010 was a tremendously important time for the channel. It was where so many different things happened. The first thing to note is the Power Mac G5. Getting the G5 for a lot of different reasons was colossal. And just seeing some of my reactions and the way that I act in these videos really does show that. Here it is guys, the unboxing of my new Mac. It's the Power Mac G5 in its original box. Look at that, you can see the back of it, all the ports. Oh my god. Right, I, this box is really heavy. I haven't got a cameraman. And um, I'm going to see what kind of unboxing video I can do. It's not going to be the best, but I'm going to give it a shot. The next really cool thing, of course, was the attic music room. My parents finished converting the loft and I was able to have a music room up there and then they redid my bedroom and I had a completely new bedroom layout that gave me a much, much better desk, an awesome place for filming and a huge amount of floor space to be able to just do anything. I had tons of space and we didn't do it for the channel. At the time, I never really did anything for the channel. These days, I like, I've got this room for the channel. Back then, it wasn't like that. It was still something that I just did. It was a hobby. Um, but it kind of organically grew and the change in my bedroom was definitely part of that. I did a big tour of Geek's Room video series and the new bedroom with the new G5, everything, kick ass. But wait until you see the desk. There it is, guys. There is my new Mac setup. And yes, it is gorgeous. So let's move my chair out of the way and I will show you everything. One big thing that I always remember from 2010 is the summer. Now, for a little while, I'd already been in my cinema job. I started my cinema job in around October or November of 2009, very, very young. I was training throughout the first half of 2010, if I remember correctly. By the time summer came around, June, July, I was ready 
to run 35 millimeter film on my own. So this is pre-digital, pre-digital projection. I was running proper 35 mil prints at the age of 14, 15, uh, 15. And I was doing so extremely often. And summer 2010 is a massive deal because a lot of people went on holiday in work and I just sucked up all of those shifts. Toy Story 3 was out and I showed it three times a day or twice a day, whatever it was, bang, 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 bang. I just kept showing it, kept logging down my hours and kept getting the money. And I was able to make two huge purchases off the back of that um, work that I did over the summer. The first one was a one terabyte hard drive for my Power Mac G5. And there is a legendary hard drive upgrade video on my channel. It's a two-parter. That is one of my favorite upgrade videos of all time I've ever made. So it's this drive that we're taking out. All you do is flip that up and unplug it. Try and somehow wangle out these cables. There you go. Cables are unplugged. And now I believe we can just pull out the drive. And the second and far bigger purchase that I was able to make was a camcorder. So I'd gone all of this time, even throughout the first half of 2010, still recording on my iPhone 3GS, which is of course standard definition 4x3 video. Pretty nasty, thought it was great back then, but I bought the, let's see if I can do this, Panasonic HDC TM10 camcorder, 1080i, saved to SD cards, lovely bit of kit, but, it was a huge headache. I didn't know very much back then. Um, my knowledge was growing, but I still didn't have amazing knowledge. It recorded in AVC HD, so my Power Mac G5, all of a sudden, was pretty useless. Uh, so I had a white MacBook at the time. I used to import the clips using the MacBook and transfer them over to the G5 once they'd been imported, because for those of you who don't know, AVC HD is not supported on PowerPC Max at all. I've spoken about it a lot since that initial discovery. So 2010, all these wonderful videos, all sorts of different things came along. I'm only really scraping the surface and talking about the, the things that really, really stand out, but so many wonderful things happened. Um, due to the AVC HD thing and my general thirst for more power, more speed, and to expand on my knowledge even more, um, the last quarter of 2010, I began planning how I was gonna upgrade to a Mac Pro, and we succeeded. 2010 going into 2011, we upgraded from the G5 and the MacBook, sold them, got rid of them, and I bought a Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is of course a 2011 thing, early 2011. Um, that's when we unboxed it, 2008 Mac Pro. Still can't get over that. Wow, it's here. <laughs> this is amazing, absolutely amazing. This is a day to remember on this channel. This Mac is gonna be with me for years. But one more thing to mention about 2010 first. 2010 was the year I hit 1,000 subscribers. So you guys can see 100 in June of 2009, and then in October of 2010, we hit 1,000. So in a year and two or three months, uh, we, we hit the 1,000 mark from 100, so an additional 900 subscribers. Um, seriously seriously a massive big deal back then. It still makes me smile just thinking about the way I felt when those kind of milestones came along. 2011. I call this the branching out year. 2011 was really the time where it changed from Tom in his bedroom as a school kid to Tom becoming a person and at the same time the channel fitting into me as that person. So, school kid with a hobby in his bedroom versus YouTube is part of my life and my life is progressing quite nicely. Um, that's the way I look at 2011. So, 2011 on the video side was the first year where I can comfortably say that that's when we started projects. And I label them as projects now, but I didn't really back then. I was just organically getting better 
uh, video making, getting better ideas, and finally sort of applying the things that I'd learned to actually achieve things of my own. And of course, one of the biggest examples of that was in the summer of 2011, when I built my gaming PC. I'd tinkered with PC parts before in the past, and bits of this and bits of that, swapping in and out, but this was the first proper PC build from scratch with all brand new components. And that PC, wow. I had a whale of a time. I had an absolutely brilliantly bonkersly good time building it. Making the video series was such good fun. I had a dead on arrival graphics card which just added to the videos because I was able to make more videos and talk about the graphics card and stuff. Um, ah, guys, 2011 gaming PC, I look at it with such fond memories. And there was a real quick change with everything that happened back then. I did something and bang, it was the next thing. It was always bang, 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 bang. You know, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying. These days I'm a lot slower. Um, I guess a lot of that has to do with all of the other commitments, but uh, what I'm trying to get at is the gaming PC from 2011, it didn't last very long. You know, I made a video very soon after that, maybe even in 2012, um, trying to sell it. But what you've got to remember is, I was, I was thirsty for it and I just wanted to keep doing it. And it's of no reflection of how I felt about that PC. That PC was so special to me. Um, and it was sweet having a PC that could finally play proper computer games that looked really nice. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a beast for its time. It was a beast considering I'd saved up myself, uh, you know, to, to do it and that. Yeah, it, it was great, great time. Here is every single part to my gaming PC. There is no way I would have um, sat here waiting, um, not sat here waiting, there's no way I would have recorded this video while waiting for a specific part. So I'm gonna take you over and down explaining every single part of this build. So, first off, let's start with the CPU. Another massive thing happened around the same time. Uh, in July, July 21st of 2011 to be specific, that was the first ever vlog. Hey everyone, and welcome to my first ever vlog. Um, I'm gonna start doing this maybe, not sure. Depends how well this goes. I'm just gonna sort of, um, take you around my life basically um, being as I've got more time in my life now because it's the summer holidays I might as well do it so I'm traveling downstairs into the kitchen because I plan on uh, I plan on making some awesome food whatever it's gonna be so it was called Making Kick-Ass Breakfast. I remember filming it. I still remember doing it. I remember my family commenting on it in person. I remember going to visit one of my aunties and I remember them uh, saying, oh, Tom, are you making breakfast, you know? And I, I realized that I'd gone into like the realm of my videos are now accessible for normal people. It's not just nerds anymore. So I started the vlog thing out of the blue. I can't remember who influenced me to even do the vlog thing. Um, my influence up to this point had been all sorts of different people, but just to name a few while we're on the subject then, I don't wanna to go too deep into it because I know this runtime is gonna be crazy. Uh, but right back in the day when starting my channel, 2009 kind of time, I was watching, I'm just gonna, just gonna plonk a few names out there. Some of these people still exist. Some of them, some of them don't exist on YouTube anymore, or some of them do, but in a very different and not so good way. Uh, but you know, before I say these names, just bear in mind, it was a different time. So I can honestly say people who influenced me in the Mac space, um, were uh, Danny is Ace, John Four Lakers, The Blue Hour, Eugene The Blue Hour, a um, few more. Uh, people that influenced me in the Apple space and the video making space uh, and just the general video-ness, the creative one. Um, and obviously Alfred on top of him, um, because, you know, they kind of came as a package at one point. So, yeah, the creative one, that's crazy. Uh, and then on the gaming side, I got heavily influenced by MN12Bird. That was a channel that I watched constantly back in 2009, 2010. 
um, maybe even 2008 as well. Uh, I think his name is Jake, if I remember correctly. He makes very little videos anymore, but huge influence there. And there are loads of other channels that I used to sort of um, skim over and, and, and have a look. But yeah, they're, they're just some of the names that pop out at me as, as hugely inspirational. So getting back to 2011, uh, that's when I started the vlogs. So that really broadened the channel potential. It allowed me to talk to my audience or you guys in a much more personal way. Um, I didn't have to talk to you via product anymore and it actually helped a lot. If you look at my videos before I was vlogging and after I was vlogging, anything I was making before I was vlogging, if I was talking about, say for instance, a power book, every now and again, I'd just throw in some random thing. It would trigger something in my mind. I'd throw in some random non-power book related statement about my life or just say, oh, I did that yesterday or whatever, you know, just really not focused on the video at all because I was so desperate to share my life with people. Um, <laughs> it sounds a bit crazy now. I wouldn't start vlogging now, you know, I, I don't think my life is interesting enough to begin the vlogging journey now, but I clearly did back then. So um, when I started the vlogging, it meant that I could use the vlogs to talk to you guys and ramble, 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 ramble all the time. And then I could be a little more focused in the videos that I made. So yeah, that's what the vlogs did. They were a huge thing. And then another huge landmark thing from from uh, 2011, I started college. September 2011 was my first year of college. So school was done with. I made a little vlog, school's out for summer, or school's out forever, or whatever, um, in July after my GCSEs, after I finished the final exam. It's a nice little vlog. I've watched it a couple of times since, actually. It's, it gives me sort of warm little memories because I did have a real sense of relief when I finished school. You know, obviously there were pros and cons, but I was very ready to move on to something new. We've crossed off the last GCSE. My school life is done. So 2011, I finished school, started college. And then with the start of college, that was such a dramatic change in my life. It really fueled what happened in 2012. But before I talk about 2012, just one more thing from uh, 2011. We can't have a very Apple focused channel without mentioning this. In October of 2011 uh, or September or October, I, it must have been October. I remember it well. I was on the bus to college when I heard and uh, I made a video about it. Yeah, I'm looking at the dates here, I'm not too sure. My video was posted on the 24th of October. That's when I posted my Steve Jobs video. Uh, Steve Jobs had passed away and everything on the channel before that point was Steve Jobs, you know, when he was still around. And since then it's been post Steve Jobs. You know, we always talk about post Steve Jobs Apple. I talk about post Steve Jobs IMNC. Um, <laughs> It sounds a bit crazy, but you know, Steve Jobs was a was a was a big deal. I'd watched the documentaries. I'd I kind of hoped that I'd have. I I, I don't know. I I if, yeah. I I wanted to throw that in there as something to mention. I felt it needed to be mentioned. I don't really have much more much more to say on the matter. But um, I haven't watched back my Steve Jobs video since posting it. I'm really nervous about what I say because I was still quite young at that point. Um, I should really revisit it one day, but that's not one of the videos I can comfortably watch now, I don't think. It's probably absolutely fine, but anyway, let's move on from that because it, it was a, a sad, it was sad, it was sad. Um, let's move on to 2012. 2012 is the only year on my notes that I don't have like a little tagline for it, so 2011 was branching out. 2012, I've just got dash nothing um, because it was, when I look back at 2012, it was one of those middle of the road years. Stuff happened. Uh, I've got two notes here. Firstly, a, a broader note, the, the college influence, the college influence on my channel, if you go back, obviously I was really getting into my music, getting into my production, learning more about sound engineering. I studied music technology in college, by the way, and I squeezed everything I could. Maybe not from the course as such, 
Um, but I squeezed everything I could from the lecturers just talking to them. Uh, that was 10 times more beneficial to me than the actual lectures uh, and what was on the syllabus. But talking to people that had been in the industry, you know, we were lucky to have a few pretty good lecturers, some people that really knew their onions in certain areas. And I loved that about college. And the, the second most important thing was meeting people. Uh, I, I always, always thank college for opening my eyes. It opened my eyes to other genres of music. And that was a huge deal. But it opened my eyes to different genres of people. <sighs> you know, when you're in school, and especially in such a small community stuck out, in the middle of nowhere or whatever, it can be easy to fall into the trap of narrow-mindedness and closed-mindedness and one way of thinking and all that really crap stuff. And college, it smashed all of that. I was, I was a very open-minded kid, but any of that kind of narrow-mindedness that started to evolve as I was a teenager and maybe started to manifest into something that could have become part of my personality, college just crushed that and it just kind of killed it out of my system. I started to really fall in love with genres of music uh, of, that I never thought I'd ever listen to and I started to become friends with the type of people that I never thought I would. And during college my opinions of what I thought my late teens were going to be like drastically changed and I learned so much in such a short space of time and that influence comes through on the channel. I had um, obviously a load of studio gear. I basically transformed the Attic studio, uh, the Attic music room, sorry, into a studio uh, during 2012 and 2013 as well. Here it is, guys. Um, it's looking pretty awesome. That was all thanks to college. I really wanted my own space to, to create. Uh, I really wish I would have used the equipment and the resources that I had more. Um, I've got definitely some hurdles as a person to overcome when it comes to um, utilizing my, my creativity and, 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 and in sort of capturing my talent, getting it recorded. Um, I've never, I take a lot of things for granted. I mean, yeah, it'd be all right, whatever. But just, you know, I I have some terrible habits there still to this day. And I, I see them uh, in 2012 looking back here. And I built this huge studio and how many tracks do I have to show for it? You know, like two? Uh, how many have I posted? None, you know, crap, really crap. Uh, someone with a bit more determination uh, and someone that could control their creative side a little better, someone that had some routine, could have easily posted 30, 40, 50 different things out of that time because I had a studio for a, for a solid amount of time. But there we go. That is that. It's in the past. Uh, another note from 2012. Should I even mention it? The PowerPC promise. Oh, my word. Why did the word promise have to be in the title? Oh, God. Um... Yeah, I just hope that what we've done since has kind of made up for it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to explain because it'll be a waste of time. Uh, the MDD that we worked on, I, I this is the positive I take from the PowerPC promise. The MDD that we worked on was an absolute beast. It was a tank and I struggled not to swear there. I really wanted to, you know, give it some... Mm. <laughs> I really wanted to say it was a massive beeping beast um, and I loved it and I still own that machine we will re-beast it in the future I don't have many good G4 parts spare parts lying around at the moment I've used them in other machines and stuff we've done the world's fastest G3 uh, I've poached them along the way for this that and the other but uh, rest assured that MDD will be revisited and this isn't like a re-promise of the PowerPC promise but I'm just saying I've, I'm just saying really simply basic basic stuff nothing crazy I've still got the machine and we will re-beast it one day because that's my goal is to kind of like beastify all of the, the PowerPC Max I own so we'll definitely do the MDD so yeah, year of the PowerPC promise, that's when I tried to try to do that. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna upgrade it to a standard where it's, um, you know, things like got enough storage for me, etc., etc. And then I'm gonna ban myself from using my Mac Pro. 
I will unplug my Mac Pro and put it in the cupboard for seven whole days. Next up, we have 2013. Oh dear. <laughs> so 2013, if I had to pick one, apologies, I think I just kicked the tripod. If I had to pick one, it would be the worst year on the channel. And worst year of my life? I don't know. I don't think so. Not the worst year of my life. I don't have a worst year of my life because I take positives from everything. And there is one massive thing that happened in 2013 that has paved the way for the rest of my life. Um, and that's meeting Jess. I met Jess in 2013 and that is the most wonderful thing. We are still together, as you guys know. Um, she's not here at the moment. They're in Asda shopping. You know, we're not physically together, but you know, we're still as one. Um, <laughs> we got two beautiful children and I've got 2013 to thank for that. Um, at least meeting Jess anyway. So 2013 was glorious because of that. And I want to get that out of the way as something wonderful, but obviously that's not really channel related. Let's talk about 2013. So, um, when did I turn 18? Let's get this right. So I must have turned 18 in October of 2012. And just like anyone when they turn 18, it opens up new doors, it opens up new opportunities. Leading up to this point, and my, my closest and oldest friends will all back me up on this one, uh, James, Jack, um, just the whole gang really. Um, throughout the first year of college, the last couple of years of school and stuff, where people are sort of maybe starting to to go to parties and, and stay out really late and have a couple of beers and try some drinking and, you know, just that sort of thing. I was never involved with any of that. Never, ever, ever. I did not touch a drop of alcohol until I was 18 years old. And what happened was I was kind of, I was always wrapped up in whatever I was doing at the time. My head was so full of uh, geeky stuff, nerdy stuff, music stuff, whatever I was doing at the time, I could not imagine a life where I was under the influence of something that would distract me from those goals and something that would eat into the time that I had to uh, experiment and to, to learn with these things, all this tech stuff and that. And I just couldn't ever see myself as one of those guys that went down the pub and got smashed every Friday night. But what happened was, uh, 2013 combined with the change in uh, personality that I had in college because of how much more my eyes were open. Um, yeah, as soon as I turned 18, I started partying. I started going out. I started staying out late. I started staying out all night. I started this, you know, life of an 18 year old. And that was probably one of the most normal things I'd ever done in my life. Um, one of my favourite things is I was I was part of such a good gang. I had a great group of college friends. I had a great group of friends that had now sort of merged with my college friends. You know, from from here, um, it just everything was really kind of perfect at that time. And going out um, and you know getting drunk was really fun. And then that led to, of course, it led to the band and. The band is what kind of draws some negative points out of this year for the channel. Um, the, God, I, I've got to be so, I, I, it's so hard to put all this into words. Okay, rewind a little. At this point, I was gigging. I was gigging sound and lighting. I had been for a few years at this point, going out, doing shows, um, uh, pubs, clubs, little festivals, this, that, and the other. You guys know the score, and I've been doing this, it was great. And then what happened was I was doing a lot of tech work for a, a local band, and the band had a couple of my friends in it, and they lost a member or whatever happened, and it one thing led to another, and I became part of a regularly gigging band. So when I say regularly gigging, we'd gig Friday night, Saturday night, possibly Sunday, sometimes a gig in the day on Saturday, and we'd practice once or twice a week. So a real huge commitment. And I did that in 2013. When did I join? I can't remember. Uh, I want to say middle of 2013, May, June, something at a, at a guess. But I joined the band in 2013, and that 
whatever kind of hope that we had for a consistent YouTube schedule in 2013 was just crushed by that. So I had college and I had the band. And then in the summer, obviously that was my last year of college. So in the summer, um, when we... <laughs> God, I've got this written here, have I? Worst summer in the history of the channel. Yeah, so basically I joined the band, obviously, and uh, we were extremely busy in the summer. And uh, what I didn't know back then, because if I knew like time management and stuff, what I didn't know was how to be kind of wild, you know, on the weekend and then come back and be normal. I didn't know how to do it, or at least IMNC normal. So 2013 really suffered and I didn't, it was the worst summer. And up until this point, the summer holidays had always been fantastic. There was something brilliant that happened every single summer holidays. So in 2010, we had, 2009 is 2009. It was me learning the ropes, right? 2010 was obviously the camcorder and the G5 upgrade. I know it was only a one terabyte hard drive, but that was huge. It was me, you know, starting to film in HD. I made all my, my own money to be able to do that, store the footage on the drive, you know, brilliant, great stuff. 2011, I had the gaming PC and all the other projects we did in the summer. Uh, 2012, I had the PowerPC Promise and all the other things we did in the summer. 2013, I had sod all, and I had a load of empty promises. Now, a, a, a massive bummer around all this sort of time and that, I think 2013, I'd started accepting donations. So a lot of videos I made completely out of the blue, had no substance to them. It was just me unboxing stuff that people had given me. And then those items that I unboxed never saw the light of day on the channel ever again. Tremendous guilt about it. But with 10 years, under your belt doing one thing. If anyone has worked a job for like 10 years, and, and we'll, we'll compare it to a job. It, it, it's not a job, but we'll compare it to one. For anyone who's worked a job for 10 years, you can't look back at every single one of those, those years and think, man, that was insane. That was a brilliant year. That was absolutely rad. You just can't do it. And 2013 for me is, yeah, it kind of, yeah. And another bad thing, let's just wrap this up with 2013. In September of 2013, something quite fundamental happened. A lot of my friends went to university. I'd made the decision not to go to university. I was a little bit semi-deluded at this point and thought that what I was doing on the side could make me enough money to kind of live. And it couldn't so that was that a lot of my friends went to uni everyone went back to college and school or whatever the heck they were doing um and i was there on my own and i announced to the camera that i was going to be making youtube videos extremely reg regularly to try and boost the channel and make some money from it and then tumbleweed i did nothing about it because i went on tour with the band went on a little uk tour and uh yeah, there was stuff leading up to the tour, stuff after the tour, and it was just a spiral into rubbishness, really. Um, and then I uploaded a particularly unpopular video around the end of 2013, sharing in like a vlog style with some funny editing and that, sharing some of my new friends and the life that I had then. And uh, yeah, it went down like a lead balloon, but that that's to be expected. I, I had a big change and I didn't know how to take the channel with me. So there's 2013. <laughs> um, it needed to happen. The year needed to happen. And I'm so glad that it did. But it's tricky to look back on. 2014. This is where I sorted myself out. I've got a little note here. 2014 dash turning things around. And I really did. Took a little while, but it got there. So a bit rough around the edges, you know, it wasn't a clean cut from 2013, obviously. I didn't have a New Year's resolution to become a better person, but it just organically happened, like all the best things do. I had some golden vlogs from 2013, uh, sorry, 2014, maybe some from 2013 as well, but the vlogs of, uh, from 2014, I look back at some of them and I think, yeah, I can really hear in my voice that I'm, I'm trying to find my feet again. I'm trying to sort myself out. On June 14th, I made an update video that was extremely important. It was the update video where I'd mentioned I'd left the band and I'd learned so many amazing things in the band. I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, I'd changed the way that I left and the way that things were left because it was all really awkward at the time. I wish that it was a cleaner break. I wish it was a nice kind of exit, but uh, 
June 14th, I uploaded the video saying that I'd left the band and things went from strength, strength to strength after that on the channel. But before they went from strength to strength, we had a summer holidays with no videos, no videos at all. Because 2014, the summer, was that rediscovery point. So I'd left the band and I was trying to figure out, okay, I'm not in this band anymore. I haven't had my weekends for the last like year or so. Uh, what am I going to do? And I pushed the gigs. I tried to gig and gig and gig and see if I could make money from doing it. Fact is, if you're on your own and you don't have a driving license and you don't have a van and you rely on yourself to buy all of your equipment and all of this, that and the other, it is near impossible to make money gigging with your own equipment as a lighting and sound engineer, at least from my experience. And um, you can do it. You can do it if you live in a good place and you can do it if you don't use your own equipment and you can do it if you drive, but I couldn't do it. So roll around to September 14 and it was kind of like a deja vu, but this is a cool one, right? I'd already learned about the promises thing by then. I hated myself for the promises that I'd made to you guys. And September 2014, I did an I'm back video uh, again, I'm back again. It's exactly the same thing as the previous September. Really embarrassing. I'm so glad I don't do that sort of thing anymore. I'd shown you guys little clips of what I've been doing over the summer, all the gigs and stuff. I worked in a couple of different clubs. It was great fun. Again, learned a lot. I'm saying that a lot in this video, but you know, it was a crucial time in my life where I was learning a lot, so whatever. So from that point forward, after that little update video, I didn't mention anything about five videos a week, not to my knowledge anyway, but I organically begun making five videos a week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, video, video, video. Now, not the best videos came out of that time. There are some really good videos, but a lot of them aren't that great, but that doesn't matter. What that taught me, what the five videos a week taught me, bang, 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 was discipline, YouTube discipline. It was a kick up the ass. I needed that kick up the, up the up, bleh, kick up the ass. So I had it, I did it, I got it, I was chuffed. So then I got a really big panto job that year, that uh, Christmas, so five videos a week, bleh, like that, right? But I got back to it, January, five videos a week, bang, 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 and I did it throughout the whole first half of 2015. So. That was extreme discipline that I'd finally taught myself after all of this time and after all of this dicking around. Five videos a week organically started, made some brilliant videos. October 20th of 2014, I hit 10,000 subscribers. 10,000. So that was a big deal. Little break for Christmas because I had a big job to do. I think November, December, and the first half of January, I was on tour that whole time uh, doing lighting for a, a, a panto. So there was that. And then I was back at it again. I managed to jump straight back in five videos a week. I did it. And to this day, I'm still super proud of myself. Yeah, you know, there are massive downsides to doing five videos a week. You put out some real rubbish that you think at the time is good, but your brain is just churning, 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 trying to get them out. I did all of that with like a zero upload speed. So yeah, chuffed with that part, chuffed with that time. So we are already on to 2015. If you're still with me, congratulations. I'm starting to get a bit, you know, I, in fact, I think, I think I'm even gonna remove the shirt because it's getting a bit toasty. I can reveal my IMNC t-shirt in all of its glory. 2015, the note I have here is the beginning of the now, and it so is. 2015 was when I really sorted myself out. So as I said previously in the end of my 2014 segment, 2015, I came into it, and during January, I restarted the five videos a week thing, and I was making five videos a week. I was just doing it one after the other. This is when I started to try and really transform the way that I used my own equipment and try to make what I didn't realize at the time I was trying to do, but looking back, I was trying to make myself a little video making studio. 
and that started with the ultimate desk setup of course. This is how my desk is looking at the beginning of February 2015 and if I just overlay a shot of how my desk was looking just a few months ago before I started this project you guys will hopefully see a massive massive difference. And after that we have the little server shelf that was the very beginnings of my network obsession, my obsession to when I uh, moved into my new place to try and get a really kick-ass network going. So little shelf under my desk with gubbins on it for network, gorgeous. Intel Mac Mini and the Gigabit Switch. Now I briefly touched upon this on my Ultimate Desk Setup video, but if we take a little look at the shelf, you guys can see the Mac Mini powered on there and also the Gigabit Switch. Plugged in, connected to the Gigabit Switch is the Mac Mini itself. And then a milestone, we had all that transition stuff between the Mac Pro, right? Mac Pro and the Hackintosh. I built the Hackintosh and that was one of the most highly polished videos up until that point I had ever done. The production was way up there compared to anything I'd done before and I loved building the Hackintosh. My Powerhack G4 project is steaming underway as you guys may have noticed. Everything is going really well and from here on in it's pretty much plain sailing. You guys have got a lot of cool stuff to look forward to in terms of build and of course seeing the benchmarks and seeing how this thing looks all put together. I cannot wait to share with you part 4 and 5. As well as do awesome projects like these, I did a load of growing up as a person. I grew, if you look at me standing there and listen to me talking in 2014 and you listen to me talking at the end of 2015, start of 2016, I did a load of growing as a person. I grew into the person that I am now. I begun my transition and I think maybe a lot of that was because I knew that I had some up and upcoming responsibilities. I didn't announce to you guys that Eli was coming until June 18th of 2015 but obviously I knew right from the end of 2014 uh, so I was wising up and I guess it must have seemed weird on the channel maybe I, I, I guess it didn't but I was wising up because I needed to wise up and you know you guys eventually got to fi find out why. So finishing off 2015 I have more pride in myself I, I must admit I'm a big fan of 2015 and the, the turnaround um, 2015 Eli came, uh, sorry, before then, I put a stop to the five videos a week schedule. Eli came, and throughout that entire thing, I still managed to consistently put out a decent amount of videos. I was expecting myself to stop the five videos a week and then slump back into a really useless kind of schedule again, but no, I still put out videos. And even when Eli was absolutely tiny, right at the end of 2015, like um, maybe October or something, I haven't got it written here, September, I launched IMNC Vlogs. I launched the Vlogs channel. So IMNC was still at the front of my brain. Um, even though all of this big life-changing scary stuff was happening and our living situation was so uncertain and things, IMNC was right there and it was it was dead important to me and uh, that really goes to show that I was able to carry this channel with me. It proved to myself then that I could take the channel and carry it with me through massive life-changing things and it worked and I'm still here to tell the tale. I could have easily uh, said, right, we've had a great run, that's it. My little boy's being born now, I need to focus my life more. But IMNC became part of my more mature life, which was... Incredible. Introducing IMNC Throw Mark II, baby, oh yeah. Once again, we've delved into the secondhand market, but this time we have spent a considerable amount more. So for £15, I have a new IMNC throne. <laughs> So how could we talk about 2016 without mentioning that video? Now that video stems from so many different places. Um, it's a rare portion of something inside of me, don't know if it's my heart, don't know if it's my brain, that rare portion that is able to just pull something completely random out of, out of the hat, make something lovely out of, out of nothing with no planning whatsoever. I didn't wake up that morning and think I was going to make that video. It just came out of nowhere purely. I know I've used this word a lot in this video, but purely organic. Uh, it just came out of nowhere. So that's the chair video. But on a serious note, um, what I love what I've written about this year. 2016, here I am and I finally know what I'm doing. 
and this is my final year that I've made notes for. So that kind of goes to show, I, I, 2016 was the transition to where I am now in 2019. And why is that? So at the end of 2015, we launched the vlog channel. I decided to take a big chunk of that content, put it onto the second channel. I, I, you know, there's both good and bad things about that. Sometimes I regret it, sometimes I don't. You know, that's, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, but I also got a new camera. I got the Canon S120, which I'm still filming with right now. That was a huge change for me. Um, but most importantly, I got a really unique opportunity, even though I didn't see it at the time. There was a huge delay in moving out. There was a massive delay with this house, as you guys know. Oh, okay. The camera's still recording. I thought that it had cut out. Okay, okay, no worries. There was a huge delay getting this house, as you guys know. And at the time, I was gutted. But it really worked to my advantage because I was able to have a little bit more breathing space in my parents' home to make videos. Now, what do I mean? If I'd have moved out straight away at this time, 2015, moved out, I wouldn't have had a chance to get to that next level with IMNC that I managed to achieve at the beginning of 2016 before moving out. I, I felt that IMNC was in a really good place when I moved, and it was because of that extra time. It was because of the delay with this house. So with all of the help and support that we had at my parents' house, you know, my parents, um, and the fact that Jess moved in with my parents and I, so we were all under the same roof, meant that like traveling time was nothing and, and you know, everything was fine. I had a load of time to make videos and we pumped out some gorgeous videos. When you scroll through my channel and have a look at all the thumbnails, they look gorgeous. They look really nice on the channel. And I've got a really warm and bright feeling when I think about the videos that I made at that time. It, in fact, it's one of my best times ever, even to this day. And a product, the ultimate product of that sensational time on the channel was the Doom PC. The Doom PC to this day is still probably my my best produced video. Speedy DDR3 memory support, and of course, USB 3.0 for connecting modern, high-speed peripherals. This board really doesn't look that different to offerings from Gigabyte today. So far, so good. Doom isn't out yet, but I feel more than ready for its arrival. It went better than I could have ever imagined. I didn't know that it was gonna blow up. I think it's still my most popular video. Let's see how many views it's got. We're on 311,000 views. Doesn't sound like much to some of the bigger YouTubers, I guess, but to me, that is huge. That is massive. So the Doom PC was, was big. And all of the videos that I did around that time, I've got a great feeling about. We did some N64 stuff. I did a cleanup of an N64 controller and stuff. Simple little things, but they were all polished and really nice. Then we got March, the last hurrah, the IMNC uh, Mark One, IMNC HQ Mark One final stream. Great fun, great, great, great fun. I haven't been chatting about streams in this video. I've just realised that, but. Yeah, you know, can't talk about everything. Um, great stream. And then of course, March, we moved out and we had the big move and uh, a rapid growth all at the same time from this year, from the Doom PC, you know, we had the move and everything, huge growth. And that basically meant that by the time July rolled around, I had 20,000 subscribers. Uh, that's it for my notes. I haven't gone any further making any notes. So 2016, we moved out, moved into where I am now, and of course, that was the beginning of all of the projects that are still pretty much running to this day. So those projects include the home entertainment setup, they include IMNCHQ, my office, um, and the home network, of course, the, the big one, the big, big one that was very, very popular. Um, and having my own home opened out, opened up those doors to those sorts of videos. I, it allowed me to make those videos. Now, of course, nothing lasts forever. And even after the move, I can't blame the move for a, a, a decline in IMNC. Um, I got a new job. September, August, September of 2016, I went from, bearing in mind all this time we've been talking, I've still worked in the cinema. So when I started in late 2009, I was always showing films in the cinema as a technician. But in August, September of 2016, I got on to the management team. 
and that changed a lot. Videos were still trickling out, kind of, but I'd never had a full-time job before in my life. So things went a bit crazy and unfortunately I had big hopes. It, it, we're nowhere near as bad as 2013 standards, right? Don't worry about that. I had big hopes and plans for the first couple of years of IMNCU when I moved. A lot of it hasn't happened yet and a lot of that is because I'm now working full time. Yes, when I saw a growth in the channel and when I was uploading really good stuff all the time, I saw the money trickling in. Of course I did, but it's nowhere near enough. You know, if I ever thought it was going to be enough, I was deluded. And I'm gutted to say that because, Christ, I would love IMNC to be... Uh, to, to generate enough income for myself and my family. I would love that. But I'm sat here today, 2019, 33k subscribers. It's not going to happen. But what has happened is I'm at a point now where I'm comfortable enough with the income coming in from the channel that I can spend that on channel projects. So I don't make money, but I don't lose money. I make a little bit of money. It depends, all depends on what I invest, but yeah, we're, we're getting sidetracked now. 2016, I started my uh, my new job in the same place, my new old job. And I'm not gonna be all down in the dumps and all doom and gloom because I still put out some great videos. 2016, late 2016, I still put out some great videos. During 2017, I still put out some great videos. 2018, the same, although 2018 was extremely slow, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I still put out great videos, so no, no big disaster, but I just wanted to say that, of course, full-time, yeah, I had to try, try and mesh the two. That's it for 2016, really. 2017, a really nice little year on the channel. No real regrets. It plodded along quite nicely, and we had some really memorable stuff out of the year. Um, world's fastest Power Mac G3, of course. Quick power-up test to see if this fan works, and then we'll close the door. There we go. It spins no problem. And there's a bong. So we are indeed laughing. We built a nice little PC. So before we go any further with tying down cables and making things a little neater inside the case, although there's not gonna be a lot we can do, but before we do any of that, let's just fire up the system. We did some great things around the house, little kitchen sound system and that, those sorts of videos always feel special. We did a great amount of variety. I didn't uh, latch on to one thing and stay on it for too long. So we did a couple of reviews that I did. Um, it marks the first time I was able to do a big fancy review for a proper tech company. So I did some stuff with MSI. I did two MSI products. So that was great. On the back, we find the remainder of the ports. From left to right, we have a 19 volt power supply input. This tiny machine, of course, needs an external brick. Thankfully, it's very compact. Next up is HDMI output capable of driving 4K displays, mini display port, gigabit ethernet driven by the Realtek RTL8111H, and finally, two USB 3.1 type A ports. Did some gaming stuff. It was the year of the Nintendo Switch coming out, so we covered that on both channels. Uh, it was great. Why don't I speak about this like extremely positively? You know, it was a fantastic little year. It was just because in 2017, this is when I kind of realized that um, I, I thought it would be easier than it was going to be living in my own place and making videos. Throughout 2016, I, I was kind of, again, once again, as we often are in life, deluded. I kind of thought own home equals very good opportunity to make videos and very, very easy to make videos. But what I didn't account for was all of the stuff that I would have to do on top now that I lived in my own home and I know all those things now. So when I was with my living in my parents' house and obviously I was doing IMNC, it would be a case of that was kind of all I had to do, you know? I helped my parents out, of course I did, but I'm, I have so many more responsibilities here. Just simple stuff, washing, cleaning, uh, making sure the, the routine is going well, you know, getting Eli settled, you know, into bed and everything like that. Even, even with Jess, even with both of us working as a team, it was strenuous and stressful. I was not expecting it. So in terms of the channel, uh, I had all these things that still haven't happened yet, all these plans, and you know, some will fade away into the distance and, and never be a thing, but some of them will, will hopefully one day become a reality. 
um, because I really do think that I am still not 100% settled into the groove of life. I don't know if anyone ever is really, but I still feel like things will settle more um, because things are, are kind of crazy. And this brings us on to 2018 as well. Let, let's just go straight on to 2018 because it merges. Arlo was born in September of 2017. And um, obviously with the two kids, that's when things got really tough. So if you look back on the channel, I mean, I can scroll down my channel and I can just count since Arlo was born, how many videos we did in 20, uh, 2017. So in, include uh, in 2018, sorry. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not sure on the dates, but it looks like less than 10. It's less than 10 on the main channel. So one of the slowest years in the history of the channel was 2018, but I, I think that everyone kind of understood, you know, I've had no major, um, major feeling of kind of uh, guilt about this, this time around. Uh, as you guys have probably noticed over the last few weeks, I've improved things slightly. I've been trying to spruce things up with the new thumbnails and I've been trying to upload more regularly and upload things that you guys actually want to see. And I hope that continues because I feel like we're in a really good place at the moment. But yeah, Arlo is now older, of course. He's not a tiny baby anymore. When he was a tiny baby and we had a toddler and when we had Eli at the same time, it was tough. Uh, and you can't always be consistent. Oh man. So that was a look back at every single year. And we got a bit fluffy and floaty towards the end there. I apologize, folks. We've been going for more than an hour according to this audio recording I've got going here. So, oh my word, I am so sorry. I've done it again. I've talked your ears off, but that's why you guys are subscribed, I guess. So, It's My Natural Colour is one of the most important things in my life. It has been one of the longest running things in my life. It has been massive and it will continue to be massive. It's part of me. I can't even talk about it like it's a separate thing now, you know, as lame as it sounds. It's me. It's part of my core. And yeah, I can't see it ever stopping. I don't know what will stop it. Because even if YouTube disappears into thin air, IMNC is going to live on. I'll keep this t-shirt forever. <laughs> so folks, I'm going to get on with editing this video because I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to be able to celebrate and know that it's the 10 year anniversary. I hope you've all really enjoyed this look back. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to talk about all of the really interesting times on the channel and all of the things. Um, it, there's just too much to cover. It's been 10 whole years of history that I'm trying to down into like an hour. And I was hoping this wasn't going to be longer than about half an hour, to be honest. But yeah, that's beyond unrealistic thinking. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you're all doing really well. And I will see you in the next video. Here's to another 10 years.